line of aim is a line going from the cue ball to the object ball. And you want to start from here and get your cue stick straight down on that line of aim. Now, if you get down and you find out you're off that line, the last thing you want to do is start moving things around and try to get back in line. What you want to do is stand back up, look at it again, find the line again, and get straight down on that line. Okay? That's important. Uh, to try to make that a habit, you can practice at home. Just put a piece of thin tape on any kind of table as long as it's roughly the same height as a pool table. And uh, practice it. It's a muscle memory thing, so you have to you have to practice doing it. Peace, guys. Let's start this video. Taking salads, so where's the eight ball? And what ball do you want to save to get on the eight ball? And what are the big problems with this rack? Alright, here's the pattern I'm seeing. Inside a pool player's head, not too many YouTube pool instructors do this, guys. In fact, not too many in-person pool instructors do this. Max Everly does it. Shout out to Max. You're a very good teacher, Max. He allows you inside his head. And that's what I'm trying to do with my videos. I want you to know what I'm thinking as I'm doing it. And this way you'll get a very unique insight in what's going on and the strategies they're, they're throwing at you and, and what they're thinking and how they're getting out of problems and what they're doing and where they are and everything else about them. It's very uh, trusting and it is, it's very dangerous because people can hurt you with it. But anyway, let's get off the uh, psychological stuff and get on with this rack. I'm pulling back. I'm taking care of this six ball because it's a problem. And as I said in all these eight ball videos, you want to take care. This goes true with nine ball too. You want to take care of major problems first. Because if you screw it up and you make the ball, you'll still have plenty of options to run this rack and get out. So this six ball is going in the pocket first. And I need that six actually to get right. Uh, I'm going back up town and, and using the six to do it. So the first the first uh, graphics I was using, they moved fast because I was going with the beat of the music, but I want to slow down a little bit and let you get a good grasp on what's going on here. I'm using the six to get back up under the two ball line, um, and this way I'll be able to stun out for the correct shot on the five to get back to the three and I want to go to the bottom rail on the three and I'm really really trying hard to get straight in on this one so I can pull back up under the four ball line. Does all that make sense to y'all? What we're going to do here is cut back to the pool table and don't forget I'm trying to get straight in on that one ball to pull it back to get up under that four ball and the key ball here is the seven. If I get up under that four that'll allow me to get the right angle on the seven to use that left hand side rail to bounce off of it and get straight in on the eight if you can afford to get straight in on the eight uh, you, that's what you want to do scooby let's go back to the pool table
Jeez, man, it's a tough crowd here. Uh, I'm at a weird angle here, and I can't I can't stick with the plan of using the seven ball for the key ball. I'm gonna have to change the key ball to the four ball. So if I try to draw this back, I'm gonna come back and hit that striped ball, and I'm gonna not be able to get on the four. So I'm gonna wind up using the four as a key ball anyway, because I'm gonna be forced to shoot the seven. So instead of going a dangerous route and trying it anyway, which I know is gonna fail, you just re you know reevaluate the plan, and now we're going one seven four eight instead of one four seven eight. So let's go ahead and do the loop back. Everybody have a great weekend, and I'll see you on Monday.